Understanding the relationship between narcissism and empathy. Strategies for developing empathy and coping mechanisms. Question. What makes one person choose maladaptive coping mechanisms such as narcissism, while another person chooses to grow and not let others dictate unhealthy coping mechanisms? Various factors, including personality traits, childhood experiences, and environmental factors, can influence the choice of coping mechanisms. It's important to note that maladaptive coping mechanisms such as narcissism are often a response to underlying emotional pain or trauma. One possible explanation for why some individuals choose maladaptive coping mechanisms while others do not is related to their attachment styles. According to attachment theory, individuals who had secure attachment relationships with their caregivers in childhood are more likely to develop healthy coping mechanisms and emotional regulation skills. In contrast, those who had insecure attachment relationships may be more likely to develop maladaptive coping mechanisms. A study by Malincrot et al., 2015, found that individuals with avoidant attachment styles were significantly more likely to use narcissistic coping strategies, such as seeking admiration from others, while those with anxious attachment styles were likelier use other maladaptive coping strategies, such as self-criticism. Another possible explanation is related to resilience. Resilience is the ability to adapt and bounce back from adversity. Individuals with high levels of resilience may be more likely to develop healthy coping mechanisms and avoid maladaptive ones. A study by Luther et al., 2000, found that children who experienced significant adversity but had supportive relationships with at least one adult were likelier to develop resilience and avoid maladaptive coping mechanisms, such as substance abuse. It's important to note that these are just a few potential explanations and that individual differences and unique life experiences play a significant role in the development of coping mechanisms. More research is needed to fully understand why some individuals choose maladaptive coping mechanisms while others do not. Question. What traits can appear as ADHD in a person who's adopted narcissistic traits as a maladaptive coping mechanism? Is one sign of potential misdiagnosis that the medication prescribed makes them feel, in their words, cracked out? It's important to note that while some symptoms of ADHD and narcissistic traits may overlap, they are distinct conditions that require different treatment approaches. A misdiagnosis can lead to ineffective treatment and potentially worsen the individual's symptoms. That being said, some individuals with narcissistic traits may display behaviors that could be mistaken for ADHD. For example, they may have difficulty focusing on tasks that don't directly benefit them or hold their interest, or they may struggle with impulsivity and acting without considering the consequences. However, these symptoms would typically be accompanied by other behaviors consistent with narcissistic traits, such as a preoccupation with their own needs and desires, and a lack of concern for others. It's also possible that an individual who has adopted narcissistic traits as a maladaptive coping mechanism may be misdiagnosed with ADHD if they seek medication to manage their symptoms. Stimulant medications commonly used to treat ADHD can have side effects such as increased heart rate, decreased appetite, and difficulty sleeping. Some individuals may describe feeling cracked out or overly stimulated when taking these medications, which could indicate that they are not the appropriate treatment for their symptoms. Suppose an individual is experiencing symptoms that are interfering with their daily life and relationships. In that case, they need to seek a comprehensive evaluation from a mental health professional to determine an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment approach. Questions. If someone who's adopted narcissistic traits to protect themselves from narcissists wants to learn empathy and better coping mechanisms, and is the self-help type, what would be some good steps to take? Are there any books they should read? If someone wants to learn empathy and better coping mechanisms, there are several steps they can take. 1. Seek therapy. A therapist can help individuals explore their emotions, identify behavior patterns, and develop coping mechanisms to deal with their emotions. A therapist can also help individuals learn empathy and compassion. 2. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness can help individuals become more aware of their emotions and develop greater empathy towards others. By practicing mindfulness, individuals can learn to observe their thoughts and feelings without judgment, which can help them better to understand their own emotions and the emotions of others. 3. Becoming defensive or angry when confronted with criticism or feedback. In relationships, an example of becoming defensive or angry when confronted with criticism or feedback 
is when one partner expresses concern or dissatisfaction about a particular behavior or issue within the relationship. Instead of listening and trying to understand their partner's perspective, the defensive partner might react with anger or denial, insisting that they are not at fault, and may even turn the blame back on their partner. This kind of response can hinder open communication, foster resentment, and prevent resolving issues within the relationship. 4. Refusing to take responsibility for their actions. An example of refusing to take responsibility for one's actions when a partner reacts to stimuli and then gets dumped could be when one person in the relationship tends to overreact or become overly emotional in response to certain situations. Instead of acknowledging their part in the issue and working on improving their emotional regulation, they blame their partner for being too sensitive or not understanding them, and then terminate the relationship. When the person ends the relationship with their partner, due to the ongoing emotional turmoil of that person, that person might still refuse to take responsibility for their actions, insisting that the breakup is entirely their partner's fault and not recognizing the impact of their own behavior. 5. Demonstrating a lack of empathy or concern for others' feelings. An excellent example of demonstrating a lack of empathy or concern for others' feelings when a person terminates a relationship is when someone decides to break up with their partner without considering the emotional impact it will have on them. They might end the relationship abruptly, through a text message, email, or social media, without giving their partner an opportunity for closure or a face-to-face -face conversation. An example of demonstrating a lack of empathy or concern for others' feelings is when the person who initiated the breakup tells the person they broke up with that they haven't hooked up with another person after the breakup, not considering the emotional impact this revelation might have on their ex-partner. By sharing this information without considering the feelings of their former partner, they could be reopening old wounds or causing unnecessary distress, showing a lack of empathy and understanding of the emotional consequences of their actions. Friends can provide support by being patient, empathetic, and non-judgmental. They can encourage the individual to seek professional help and offer to help them find resources or support groups. Friends need to set boundaries and take care of themselves as well, as supporting someone with narcissistic traits is emotionally challenging. Ultimately, the decision to disclose one's struggles with narcissistic traits is a personal one that should be made based on the individual's needs and circumstances. Individuals must seek help from professionals and supportive friends or family members to work towards positive change. Questions What if someone who's objectively demonstrated narcissistic traits doesn't want to change? What is their probable outlook for meaningful relationships? What is the probable end-of-life outcome for that individual? If an individual with narcissistic traits does not want to change, their outlook for meaningful relationships may be poor. Narcissistically selfish individuals have difficulty with intimacy and empathy, making it challenging to form and maintain healthy relationships. Studies have shown that narcissistic traits are associated with decreased relationship satisfaction and increased relationship conflict. Campbell and Foster, 2007, Worst and Gerlach, 2017. Regarding the probable end-of-life outcome for someone with narcissistic traits, it isn't easy to make a definitive statement, as many factors can influence an individual's life trajectory. However, some research suggests that individuals with narcissistic traits are at increased risk for mental health problems, such as depression and anxiety, Besser and Priel, 2010, as well as physical health problems, such as cardiovascular disease. Smith and Mackenzie, 2006. It's important to note that while some individuals may have narcissistic traits, it doesn't necessarily mean they have narcissistic personality disorder, NPD. NPD is a personality disorder characterized by a pervasive pattern of grandiosity, need for admiration, and lack of empathy, and can only be diagnosed by a mental health professional, American Psychiatric Association, 2013. Narcissism and empathy are two distinct psychological constructs that are often viewed as opposing traits. However, research has shown that narcissistic individuals can learn to develop empathy and healthier coping mechanisms if they want it bad enough. To begin this process, it is crucial to recognize that narcissism is a maladaptive coping mechanism that can result from early life experiences, including attachment difficulties and emotional trauma. Individuals who have adopted narcissistic traits to protect themselves from narcissists can benefit from therapy to explore their emotions, identify behavior patterns, and develop healthy coping mechanisms to deal with them. In addition to therapy, practicing mindfulness can also help develop empathy and emotional intelligence. 
Mindfulness can help individuals become more aware of their emotions and develop a greater sense of empathy towards others. By practicing mindfulness, individuals can learn to observe their thoughts and feelings without judgment, which can help them better to understand their own emotions and the emotions of others. Finally, reading books on empathy and emotional intelligence can also be helpful for individuals looking to develop empathy and healthier coping mechanisms. Some recommended books include Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman, The Empathy Effect by Helen Reese, and The Art of Empathy by Carla McLaren. Sources used for this podcast include American Psychiatric Association, 2013, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, an article by the American Psychological Association titled Empathy, What It Is and Why It Matters, written in 2017, Journal of Social and Clinical Psychology, 29.8, entitled Grandiose Narcissism versus Vulnerable Narcissism in Threatening Situations, Emotional Reactions to Achievement Failure and Interpersonal Rejection, pages 874 through 902, by Besser and Priel, 2010, Clinical Psychology Review, 28.4, titled Narcissism at the Crossroads, Phenotypic Description of Pathological Narcissism Across Clinical Theory, Social Personality Psychology, and Psychiatric Diagnosis, pages 638 through 656 by Kane, Pincus, and Ansel, 2008. Social Psychological Foundations of Health and Illness, pp. 586, 608, titled The Narcissistic Self, Background, an Extended Agency Model, and Ongoing Controversies by Campbell and Foster, 2007, by Blackwell Publishing. Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ, by Goleman, 2005. A journal in childhood development written in 2000 by Luther, Cicchetti, and Becker entitled The Construct of Resilience, A Critical Evaluation and Guidelines for Future Work, pages 543 through 562. An entry from the Journal of Counseling Psychology by Malincrot, Miles, J.R., and Levy, in 2015 titled The Narcissistic Coping Inventory, Development and Validation, pages 223 through 242. The book, The Art of Empathy, A Complete Guide to Life's Most Essential Skill, by McLaren in 2013. An entry in the Journal of Attention Disorders by Muti, and Pinto in 2020 titled The Overlap Between ADHD and Narcissistic Personality Disorder, pages 90 through 98. Attention Deficit Slash Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, by the National Institute of Mental Health in 2018. The book by Dr. Helen Reese and Liz Naporant in 2018 titled The Empathy Effect, Seven Neuroscience-Based Keys for Transforming the Way We Live, Love, Work, and Connect Across Differences. Annual Review of Clinical Psychology by Smith and McKenzie in 2006 titled Personality and Risk of Physical Illness, pages 435 through 467. An entry in the Journal of Personality Disorders by Wurst and Gerlach in 2017 titled Narcissism and Romantic Relationships, The Differential Impact of Narcissistic Admiration and Rivalry, pages 633 through 646. We hope that today's episode brought some insight. Remember, understanding the relationship between narcissism and empathy is essential for personal growth and developing healthier coping mechanisms. Individuals who recognize their narcissistic tendencies can work towards developing empathy and more adaptive coping strategies through therapy, mindfulness practices, and self-education. Building a supportive network of friends and professionals can further facilitate positive change. It's crucial to remember that change is possible, and with the right resources and dedication, individuals with narcissistic traits can work towards improving their relationships and overall well-being. By addressing the underlying issues contributing to narcissism and fostering empathy, individuals can create meaningful connections and live more fulfilling lives.